When you first open up Racetrack Builder, you'll be greeted with this screen. There is the option of New or Open. Open will open up any files inside any folder that you choose on your computer. If you use project name, you can, you can change it from New Project to any name you wish. And below that, you can change the location of where it will be stored. There are other um, types of things you can use to build racetracks with. The one that I'll be using today is called Race Day. There is also Yorkshire Dales and City Streets, which, in, which includes City Roads instead. Width and depth in, is what determines the um, map width and depth, obviously. And however you change that will change the way that the map is spawned and how large it will be. The options on the right called type, background size, and mask size does not to be need to be changed at all. It just changes the game that it will be aimed for, which is either a set of Corsa or R factor. There are two options down in the bottom. You have a Google API and you also have for maps for Google API for satellite imagery on your map or terrain. The first thing we have in terrain is the brush that will change the way that the map is. When you use this for smaller amounts that you'll be changing, I recommend you use the subdivide triangles option. Using subdivide triangles will make it that it's more fine and more precise when changing terrain. Using the strength and um, size can change how strong or large the brush is, meaning that you can make it more powerful or smaller. Using the paint terrain option, you can change the way the grass may look. You can change it from being bright, and then clicking shift, you can make it go dark again. Be careful, because the light and dark materials cannot be undone. There are also different types of grass. Here you can remove um, tiles from the map, making the file size smaller. I recommend doing this to any of the spare tiles on the map, if you do not need it. You can add and remove them at any time. Roads. With the roads, I recommend that you use the um, the second option of curves of curves because it is easier and more precise to work with. Using the drop down menu, you can see what types of road there are. By doing up, then you just drag your mouse, and a road will be there. You can change the road to any light or dark thing or dark road I recommend using the second option as as it is easier to control where the curves are and easier to manage to manage the curves today I'll just be doing a basic curve just so I do not need to build an entire racetrack using the small pink nodes you can change how, how the curve is The pink nodes change the way the curve, the curve may look, and the main nodes there also change where they will be. Moving the nodes, you can also shift click to move multiple at once, or delete multiple at once. Be careful of overlapping pink nodes as that they will make the game lag, and also make your track not as good. You also have the option to change the track nodes. This can control the um, camber, the natural camber of the road, which is normally used on racetracks for draining. You can also change the height of the grass around the track, although you can delete it if you want. You can change the height of the nodes 
meaning that you can either erase all the camp or even get or slightly adjust it in places. By clicking delete when you're on when you have clicked one of them, you will delete the node. This can be undone by ch by control clicking the place or control Z. By control clicking on a road, you can change the way that the road will be. This adds a node in the middle of the road. This is the same with the track nodes. Materials for the track can be changed with the material brush. If you click on one side of the track, you can double click and change the type of tarmac that will be there. I'll be using darker outskirts than the light than the track that I'm using so far. You can also use the option to make them um, terrain the material. In the top menu, you also see options when you are in the track node area to change the camber of the track. This can be increased or decreased at any time. As you can see, this is what high camber looks like. I do not recommend using this. You can also have the option to use no camber or even anti-banked curves. You have the option to use cut terrain, which I recommend always using, or cut track and be cut by track. This is used if you were to have a second road, like I build here, as a pit lane. This means that there will not be any overlapping glitchy track on the edges of each piece of the road. By clicking these, you can either disable it or enable it at any time, and you have to use it to the other roads connecting to it as well. Objects. Objects in, in Racetrack Builder are fairly simple unless you have X Packs enabled, which will be at the end of this video. Using the single ob object form will just spawn one object. You can then use Move Object to change the shape and the size of each object. The middle part will increase the object size, and um, when it is yellow, that means you are highlighted on it. Using the Arrows at the end of the lines will increase in that direction. Using the other lines, you can either spin it or you can tilt it in either direction. Using the straight lines, it'll also mean that you can put it in just you can move it in only that direction, which is good if you wanted to keep it in a straight line but don't want to move it side to side or back and forward. String objects. 
String objects in Racetrack Builder mainly consist of tyre bundles, garage, pit garages, and curbs. Curbs can be placed on the edge of any track, but you have to do it manually. I recommend using the curve feature to get it precise. Make sure that you are doing it in the right direction to make sure that you do not have textures backwards, or that the thing is flipped and on the wrong side of the, of the track. Curbs can be placed by just using the curve option, and can be I recommend placing it on the edge of the track and making sure it is as precise as possible. There is no quicker way than doing it like this. Curbs can be glitching, can be glitched sometimes, so I recommend making making them as careful as possible and checking them more than once to make sure that there aren't any spikes in them. Walls. Walls in a set of Corsa are racing barriers unless other and X packs are enabled. I recommend using the curve option to get them as close as possible to the track and as close and as um, accurate as possible as well. There are multiple options in the top left hand corner of your menu. When you have walls and when you are using walls, control click also adds nodes to walls as does most other string objects. Shift click also moves it, m more nodes at once if you would like to, to do that, or you can delete more than one at once. There are also cross sections for these things as well, so you can slightly modify the way that they may tilt. These can be good when making like an oval type structure, like a super speedway, to make sure that the barriers are not in any dangerous position. You would have to do this at both ends of the wall that you are currently working on to make it even though. Grid start and, f start and finish lines and pit boxes. When clicking the checkered flag in your top left menu, you can get all the options to get track, um, track check checkpoints, also known as sector checkpoints, your pit boxes and your grid boxes, as well as a hot lap box. Put the hot lap box after the final corner, which in this case there isn't any, so it'll be behind the grid. When moving your pit lane around, you want to make sure that you have one car per pit box, unless you would like more than that. You can also do control click to put them in a more precise location instead of just a straight line, as you can see me do here. The green circles around them are used to tilt them and turn them in different ways, as can be seen here. This makes sure that they are facing the right direction. You can also change the amount of cars on the grid in your top left menu. The grid can be moved using the front and when double clicked, clicked flips it around. I recommend scratching the start and, and finish line into your pit lane so even if you are in the pit lane it will pick it up as you have completed a lap. You can do the four rally check to make sure that they are all in the same, that there is a finish line on the track in case you want to use a rally stage in it. You can change the amount of columns on the starting grid, as well as double clicking to make it go the other way. Same with the checkpoints, although you cannot click the cars on, on them. There's also options to change the amount of stagger and offset in the rows there are. X-Packs. Expansion packs, also known as X-Packs, can be enabled when clicking edit. There are multiple other options like Venue, which changes the light that you'll get on your track. Xpax is a downloadable content that you can is downloadable content from the internet that you can install into your racetrack builder directory.
By enabling them, you 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 will get extra features, including the city streets X pack, which is built into the game, as well as the stunts and Yorkshire Dales X packs. I'll leave a link in the description for extra X packs. Exporting the track. Exporting the track can be done when clicking File on the top left menu. This will bring up um, this will bring up options such as save, save as, new, open, as well as export. When you export your track, you can either click everything or get rid of everything, and just export certain components of the track. I recommend clicking everything, and if you want to, you can do it in separate folders. Then click OK. KS Editor. KS Editor is a third-party software that you can download from the link in the description. Click o Open FPX and find your export folders in your racetrack build to save files. This will be where you saved your racetrack earlier. You can go into the racetrack area and find the FPX file in the export folder. This is where your racetrack files will be. There will also be a texture folder in there that you'll need for later. Find your racetrack. And then once you do find it, get ready to rename some object objects. This can be done by right-clicking on the object. You can also click the plus button, opening up the menu of every single object on your racetrack. With walls, expand all the walls to show the extra, um, extra um, name underneath. You need to rename all of these to one wall underscore zero, then a following number of your choice. This makes the wall a collidable object and can be done with any other string objects on the track. Curbs do not need this to be done though, as they are built into the game and named correctly already. Do this to your pit garages as well, so the pit garages are now going to be collidable objects. You can do this to objects that are in the track as well, but you will need to rename a lot more and is not needed if it's outside of the track. With your pit lane, you can rename it 1pits underscore 1. This will allow the pit limiter to be used in-game, and it will be built in in-game. You rename all the objects of your pit lane to this. Rename all everything in your pit lane to 1pits underscore 0. KS Editor Export and File Formatting. There will be a, t a track template in the description that you can download. This is really good to use, or, or you can find a similar one in your racetrack builder directory. When you export, you go, f you go save KN5, and then you click track. Save it as the name of your track, which in this case will be YouTube example for me. And then click save. It will save, and then you can go find it inside of your folders. Just here, you'll see me grab the built-in um, format formatting file into Racetrack Builder, which you can find in your support area of your files, and then a set of courses. You can find track templates. Now, copy and paste this into the folder where you'll be constructing your track. This will be good for later, as now everything will be in the same place. Go into the export folder where this will most likely be saved, unless you specify it into another place. Copy and paste it into that folder, and then rename it to your track word for word and letter by letter. Drag your KN5 file into that, and copy and paste your texture file into there as well. Then you can delete these thi the preview and outline, and then you can use other ones if you wanted. Then click on ui.json file. Rename the first one to your track. Description and everything else can be different, except for the pit boxes, which needs to be the amount of pit boxes you put in earlier. You can also put in the country and city this was your, you built your track in, as well as the coordinates, to give live weather updates for Content Manager. This means that you can have realistic weather. You can then do Control S to save it and close it down, and it will save, and then you can. Drag and drop this into your set of course of files.
Nicholas Latifi has crashed, and I think that is at turn 14. That will be a safety car. And, and coming into the pits.